identify that. Okay, I think I'm recording now. Very good. So I'm Mary Ann and um, looking forward to this whole presentation for everybody. It's about WordPress 5.5.1 now. So um, first of all, I wanna talk about some glitches that can come up. And this isn't necessarily related just to WordPress 5.5, but there can be um, other glitches that show up when you have, whenever you do an update on something. So I'm gonna show you how it might look if something comes up. I have a WordPress website I did for Friends of Pure Park years ago, maybe six years ago when I was still a student at PCC and learning web design. And I've updated a few times with different themes, still maintain it and manage it. But I had an old plugin on there, a MailChimp plugin. At the time, the way you built a, mail, a MailChimp list was you put this little plugin on the website, that plugin was connected to your MailChimp list in MailChimp. And so anybody who signed up for the Friends of Pure Park email list went and kind of where that plugin worked. That plugin was not being kept up to date. So when I updated to 5.5, this plugin failed. And this is the message I received. It was up there at the top of my page. It says right here, notice, register rest route was called incorrectly. The rest API, API definition. There's, this is key, MC4WP. So this is where I knew it would be. It would be somewhere on my MailChimp for WordPress plugin. So I went ahead and de I went backwards, went hit back button and deactivated that plugin and this went away. Everything worked fine. So then I had to find a, another way to make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did. So this is the Friends of Pure Park website now. And uh, it's a great little website uh, for Friends of Pure Park. And here is the, the new version. Subscribe to our monthly email, keep me informed. Email, first name, last name, subscribe. So what I did, MailChimp's upgraded in the many years since I originally have that other plugin on here, as I went into MailChimp and it allows you now to create a little subscription form and then you take the code for that and you put it into your website. So I went to MailChimp and I created my subscription form and then I went to WordPress Appearance Customize, which is where I had the plugin inserted before, widgets, and it's the first one. I used the custom HTML and I just pasted in the code from MailChimp and voila, here's the plugin right here. So that gives you an idea of how you may work around things. Some things will come up as you're building websites and working on your website. And if you get an error like this, look for anything that might clue you in as to what plugin or what theme is conflicting. So that's what I wanted you to know about that. Um, let's go, any questions about that specifically, about detecting an error like this and figuring out uh, what to do about it? Uh, uh, doesn't look like anybody has any questions. Okay, well that was very descriptive then. I'll close that out. Okay, so now, go on here, I'm gonna to go to this screenshot. So I have another one, this is my e-commerce website and it uses a professional plugin called um, Easy Testimonials Pro. And uh, actually no, it uses the free version. This uses Easy Testimonials. So this, this plugin works great. And after I updated to 5.0, no, what happened was I updated the plugin before I updated to 5.5 and I got this error. And it had worked, it didn't have the error before. If you look here, I'll make it a little bit bigger. 
jQuery Migrant Helper Warnings Encounter. This page generated the following warnings. So this at the time was still undeveloped. It was not live yet. Uh, WP Content Plugins, Easy Testimonials. So I knew which plugin it was, it was having a problem. So I deactivated it. And then I updated the website to 5.5. And then I reactivated it and this error went away. So what had happened was, because it's a professional plugin, well-maintained, they knew this, the developers knew this update was coming and they had already updated their plugin to meet the qualifications of the new version of WordPress. So you might say, oh, I don't want to update WordPress, but have a good plugin on there and you update it, you get this, you know, maybe you want to go ahead and update WordPress. So any questions on that? Um, I don't see any questions, but I just wanted to add something real quick. Sure. Um, so with this particular bug, there's a plugin, which I'll paste in the paste the URL in the chat. Um, so this is from the uh, the official WordPress team that if you do need jQuery migrate enabled and your plugin uh, hasn't uh, depends on it and do doesn't have uh, that enabled, then you can use that plugin. Okay, jQuery migrate. Yeah, it's called uh, Enable jQuery Migrate Helper. You know, I had um, actually the same website. I had uh, another problem, but it turned out it was a CSS issue. And uh, they, told, they thought initially that it was probably something with having to do with the latest version of WordPress. And they asked me to, uh, to add in this, this plugin, the jQuery Migrate. Okay. And I did, it didn't help. And then I went back to the developers and they figured it out. And I just put in a little bit of CSS and it was like all fixed. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, we'll so you may... What'd you say? Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, you, you know, you may not need this plugin, but it's uh, good to keep in mind just in case it solves your problem. Right, yeah. You definitely, um, it, it may be worth adding jQuery Migrate just to see if it works on, for your situation. It didn't help me, but it, it might in some cases. So I'm going to remove this screenshot now. We're done with this. Okay. So we're moving right along here. We go back to here. Okay. So, um, new things with 5.5. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the blocks and then I'm going to come back and go through the, some of these pictures. So first of all, I have a website I'm developing for a client, dev.cmonkeymaui is still in development. And she has very specific ideas of what she wants it to look like. And she wanted her Instagram feed to be wide width, okay? So on this particular theme, um, of course you can put pictures wide width because we already have that ability in, in WordPress. But um, you wanna keep your writing pretty narrow and the reason is that this is easier to read. So if that themes nowadays are often being designed with kind of a narrow column for writing because it's much easier for people to read. And she's fine with that. And this is a video and I made that a wide width. And then I made, this is two columns, the pictures in one column and this is the second column. But she wanted her, her Instagram as wide as the video. And it's like, so I tried plugging in the Instagram. No, it was only as wide as the regular thing. I was like, what do I do to make this happen? But WordPress, now has multiple columns that can be wide width besides just the images. So one of them is the group block can be wide width. And another one is the columns block can be wide width. So all I did with this, so I went here, you notice this is a group block, you can see that. I'll give you another example. So this is a group block and I added the group block so I went to plus and I put in the group block. 
I did this, okay? And I said, I'm only gonna have one thing in it, <laughs> just the Instagram feed. And then I added the, um, whatever I added to add the Instagram feed. I think it was just a short code or, what did I put in there? I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> I put in the Instagram feed and voila, it, it was wide width. So keep that in mind. If you have something that you want wider and it's like not working because it's not a picture, it's okay. You can put in your columns and just have one column and make that column wide width. See, if I'm looking here, I miss, I have, let me get this one up again. Oh, that's the Instagram, it's clicked on Instagram. I'll show you on another one how to make it, how you can do it wide width. I'll go to, to this now. But anyway, it has the width when if you've actually are hooked on, the, on it perfectly. Yeah, here it is. This is the Instagram that I actually put into the group block. And then I selected the group block to be wide width first. So that's a little bit we do, do about that. Um, you want to see another version of that? Let's try, let me actually walk through and do it. I'm going to go to another page in this site. And we'll do it again. We'll go to snorkeling, edit page, and we'll just do it again. It's not live anyway. So plus, and I go for group block. I pick it, and you see here, and I'm going to pick it being, let's do full width. And then I pick this block, I pick any block I want. I'm going to do Instagram, Instagram theme. Let's do preview, preview a new tab. Let's see, oh look, at, it's even, this is even wider. This is wide width instead of full width. So it's really that easy. Oh, I'm sorry, you have it full width instead of wide width. Yeah, I, this one I just did a uh, full width. The original one on the home page is only wide width. Uh, she didn't want it. She didn't want it full width. I just wanted to run snorkeling. Nobody's going to see it. Oh, yeah, I get out of here because I already did this. So I let's take this and then delete it. The way I delete things, I hit a paragraph block and then I hit delete. There you go. It's all gone now. <laughs> And then I delete one more time. Actually, no, I'm still going to keep the group block in there. And let's add a columns block. We'll do three columns. And we'll do them. OK, so those are going to be, I think they'll be full width too, because that's what I have it set up. So let's do a paragraph. I'm going to say information. Do another paragraph, and then we'll do we'll do a picture. Do a small picture in here, and we'll select an image and see what we got from the media library. What do I have? Uh, bah, bah, bah. We'll put this one in. Select. Okay, let's preview it. And you see, so this could be full wide width. I wonder if I can change this to just, uh, I'm not sure if I can change it to just a, no. Uh, there it is, I got it. So I managed to hit the right thing. So I'm back in the group block, not even that block. I don't know if I can actually change it to um, narrow width or, or go out of the wide width. Change the line, oh, there we go, no. No, that's the column, I'm in the column. Is this the group block? Okay, well, anyway, we're gonna delete this. So Mary, yes, uh, you can. There's um at the very top, 
there's like this three steps or something that um, will show you the, it looks like three minus signs that are kind of going up the stairs between the pair. That shows you where your group is. Oh so, my goodness, I learned something new. So now I should be on the group block. Mm -hmm. I that group. And let's change it to, um, it's on full width, let's change it to wide width and we'll see if that made a difference. You can also find that at the bottom left of the screen too. Yeah, it did make a difference. It made it narrower. Okay. Bottom left of the screen. Okay, I learned something new. So what do I do again? I go to this three steps. Okay. And I'm in the group block. And wide width, full width. Let's just do, um, I wonder if you can go back to just the regular narrow. Do you think there's a way to do that? I don't see a way to do that. So I would probably, I'm not going to keep this anyway, but um, any other questions on this? Changing alignment? Um, I have an observation that I yes. concur with you. They should put um, a way to, to have not wide or, or full. I noticed that myself, like once you chose one, you couldn't get out of it. Right. Yeah, but once I was, <laughs> <laughs> you showed me how to change it from wide to full. I mean, from full to wide, which is great. Thank you. <laughs> but I didn't know how to change it back to just narrow. Yeah, that's not an option. It's kind of a, I found it to be um, a problem too. Right. Okay, well, let me go back to. I have a question for you. Yes. If you would have started that group not wide or full, you know, would you have to go back and delete that whole group and then start again to be able to get it narrower? Yes. I mean, if I, once I put it on wide or full, we couldn't figure out how to put it on narrow. So. But if you got rid of that again. group and started it again, then you would just put that new group on narrow. Right. Or I would delete the old group and just put a regular group block in. Um, let's see, this is a group block right here, probably. Here's an, another thing you can do too. You can create a group block and then drag those into the new one. Right. Oh yeah, we could probably, that's probably that another way to make it. The new one. That gets a little weird too, but it's better than it used to be. <laughs> right. But I just think it's pretty cool that we can have these columns that are wide and, and so forth. I think that's great. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. Um, that's my dog. <sighs> that's my husband yelling at him. Okay, okay, let's go to the next thing. Um, <laughs> somebody rang our doorbell, how dare they? Okay, so we're done with this, with this one. Let's go to this one. Speed, this is good. Fast is always better. And um, what happens is now images are all lazy loading once you go to 5.5. So instead of everything having to load at once, you can just load as you if people scroll down the page. And so this is really a nice way to have your website come up a little faster. Um, They'll load when they're about ready to scroll into view. So it's called lazy loading. And also it says on mobile that images, uh, stuff that doesn't need to be in the browser won't load at all. So that's great. Um, search. There's a new sitemap. I honestly can't say much about this. I'm used to using the Yoast SEO sitemap. So does anybody have anything they'd like to add about the sitemap? In, in WordPress? It's a very basic site map. I'm sorry, speak up. It's a very basic site map. Okay. And, and there's no control over what's in it. It just, it just maps your system. If you use Yoast, Yoast turns off the site map feature that is in WordPress. And so it uses its own site map. So most of the SEO products are automatically turning off this feature and using their own sitemap feature. 
Well, that's probably a good thing because I, I like Yoast SEO really, really well. And um, it's good to, but I'm, a lot of people don't know about Yoast. They've just got a simple website and having that sitemap on there will help it come up in search results because it's something that Google looks for. So it'd be a nice feature. Security, okay, updates, plugins, and themes. I, I think you should go in and update your own plugins and themes. And I kind of described why at the beginning, right? When I had a updated stuff and I saw an error, because I was in there updating, I could figure out where the error was and fix it before it ever became a problem. If things just update automatically, well, you might not know for a week <laughs> that your site's gone down or that there's an issue. However, um, perhaps in some cases on very simple sites, it might be useful to have that feature. If you only got a couple plugins and they're good quality ones, you know, maybe just turn it on. You can not think about it. So, but I would only turn that on if you're really sure that you're that you want that to be done automatically. Because otherwise, no. Any questions on what we've talked about so far here? No. Okay, we're gonna no. move on. Block patterns, image, inline image editing, and new block directory. Okay, let's talk about that. We'll go to my website. There I am. There's my dog. He doesn't get to go on walks anymore. <laughs> and so I'm going to do this on my website just because it's okay. I, I, I don't have a, a website that's in development I want to mess with that much. So, okay. So we have here, I'm gonna show you what this new block pattern thing looks like. So here you have the, you hit the new block editor up there and look at all these different blocks that you can, that you got, okay? A zillion different blocks. But this one is patterns. Go to patterns. It's like they're already built for you. You want uh, two buttons so people have a choice by now or by tomorrow, <laughs> there it is. You've got your three button choices. You've got your columns with a title already done. You don't have to add a column block. Uh, again, same thing on here. If you got a columns comparing a couple pictures, you would put this one in. I mean, it just kind of makes things easy. Three columns with text buttons. This is often what people do when they're selling something online. You know, you have good, better, best, and you, the pricing is set up, and usually people pick the middle one. That's kind of a psychological thing. But there is your, you just add that. This is a gallery block. It has two images side by side. This is already a header with a large header with a heading. We can do that anyway, but there it is. And uh, here's another large header with a heading and a button. All done for you. Um, heading with a paragraph. And here's a fancy quote with a picture. Does anybody want me to experiment with one of these? Because I will. Which one? Pick, a, pick, a, pick one of these for me to throw in and play with on my website. All silent. Someone said the red one. The red one. <laughs> okay, well these are both red. Let's let's do let's do the first red one. Is that good with everybody? There it is. So I haven't played with this yet, so I'm gonna figure out what it is. So it looks like this is a I could change the block style here. If I click on here, I can change what it says. And I'm going to say buy now. And let's see if I have to edit. Where would I put? I can do a border radius if I want. See how I make it out of circle? 
okay? And with this, the color settings, the fill is um, filled with the white lettering. And this is a, probably the one for the other one, the outline. It's already set up for you. I could probably change the color here if I wanted. Text color is white, but I could pick maybe gray for it. See, it turns gray. There's the white text color. Background color, I could change the same. Change it there. Um, and I think I've been, I, was this where we put the link? Let's try it. Let's see if this works. Let me find another link. Hold on here. We'll link it to Sea Monkey Maui. And I'll say open a new tab. Let's update it. Okay. We're going to go and view my page. Where are we here? That did not actually link. And that, I've had that problem before. Um, so I thought it might not work. Let's go back in and edit. I don't think that link works consistently, at least this is the second time and it was a different website when it didn't work. So I'm gonna go in here to HTML and see if there's a place to edit it. Okay. So, short and radius. So the href is missing. Yeah. It didn't work. I'm not sure why that happened though. Right, so let me see where right, I put that dev, in. That dev, it's pick, you could be picking up that dev as something. It might be flat. Target blank. So would I put the href right here? Yeah, you can actually put it right between A and class at the very top. Okay. It usually appears right after that. And well, yeah, I know what you were saying. You were gonna put it in front of the link. Yeah, yeah. You, and you know what? I'm not sure what the, the see the rel equals. I think that might have screwed it up too. I'm not sure what's going on here. So link rel is that actually the link? <laughs> yeah. So, um, sorry, you you want to leave the other stuff in the rel attribute, um, okay. but just cut the URL out of that. Yeah. So rel okay. equals no opener, no referrer. Okay, rel equals no referrer. Like delete that right there. No opener, no referral by now. And then I'm gonna put my link. But you gotta put e e um, equals, href equals, yeah. And then I go like this. And then, yeah, yes, and then a space. And do I put the little, the uh, carrot in here? No, um, no, because that's all inside of it. So just a space, because it's ha this um, anchor has a class. Okay. So well, that's all part of the same thing, yeah. Yeah, so this is a problem, because it looks like it should link okay. there. Yeah, so actually, sorry, I, I think I know what the problem is. Um, cool. So it says link rel, and I think a lot of people don't know what that is, or or you look at it really quick, and that, um, that sets different attributes than the actual um, URL. So, so is that like default? It says no opener, no referrer there, it looks like. Um, so there must be another place where you put the URL. Yeah, let's go try it again. Like, let's just um, not do the HTML. Uh, yeah, oh, um, it, I just saw where you put it. Click the button again. See, it's down here. Oh. And you have to click edit. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And then make sure, here's the thing too, make sure that once you put the link in, you hit that arrow L thing, because then it won't take either. I've been on that one before. Let's try this now. I don't think that came up initially. No, because you probably clicked, there's two parts to the button. There's the text and then the button. It's weird. The buttons are weird. <laughs> well, let's try it. Well, this is where you learn. You come to this and you learn something. Da, da, da. Yay. Yay. Okay. So we know how to do that. 
I think I think the confusion is the way they designed it that there's two places where you can edit the settings for the button. There's right. that pop up right there, and then there's also the right side. Right. Yeah. So this and, is this yeah. just means no open no refer, and this is where you put the actual link. So if I went to here, for example, um, I'll say about Sea Monkey. And then I think yeah, you click back. on that. You can click on the link icon above it. Duh. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's a two step process. And then you click on the first time, and it doesn't do anything. You're looking over to the side. So this is a user experience issue. They, yeah. should, have, they should have the um, ability to put the link on the right hand side too, and make it pretty obvious. Right. So. But this is okay. Now we know what you do. This is why you do these little things. Okay, so let's go back to the page. Now let's do something, because there's something else that, that we can do with, um, we can do inline image editing, and I haven't actually done this yet. So we get to experiment with something else. So we're gonna do add a block, and Sorry to interrupt. I, I wonder if you should make a new page since this is your live website. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I thought of that too. I thought of people contacting you asking about Sea Monkey. I really did. And, and you <laughs> <laughs> that's just I'm deleted. Later. <laughs> we just see it's all deleted now. We deleted. Yeah, let's go to the new page. We're getting nervous. New page. <laughs> you can relax. There's no Sea Monkey on there. Okay. <laughs> But now we're going to put another picture on. And so let's use it. We'll put an image block in and look at with this new block thing. You can see so many different things. I'm not even sure what markdown is. Yeah, I, I don't haven't used that one. There's a lot of ones I haven't used. I may have insert poetry using special spacing formats or quote song lyrics and compare images. That's a good one, too for the right thing. Okay, let's go to the images though. Just a regular image. So we're going to select an image from our media library. Let's pick this picture because we all know that's from Seattle back in the day when you could actually get together with people. <laughs> back then, these are this is Doug and Doug and Doug. <laughs> and Misty and me and three more WordPress people. So it was a fun day. Okay, so how do we want to edit this image? We're on it. Um, we can do rounded pictures if we want. We can do default. Um, click, on the, click on the crop tool. That's pretty much what inline editing is about. Okay. So now, now you can crop the, the image without having to go out to the media library and jump through those hoops. Okay, let's see if I really can crop the image. Huh. How do you crop it? Well, let's see what it has. It says you, square. You normally pull from the corner in the, that box, like start pulling the corners. And let's you'll see if it does. No. What no if, what, click, click back on the aspect ratio that you were just on. Okay. And change it to like 16.9, which is the new high resolution. Oh so my you, goodness. So now your, your picture, when you save it, and you can move the image around inside that little box to get what you want. Mm. Now when you save it, your, your image will be formatted to 16 by 9. Okay. Mm. So you don't actually crop it. You just use this, this, uh, this editor here to, to do things with it. Well, yeah, it's it, crop, it a crop. But it, it's cropped, but it's it's not giving you a lot of options. You can't do whatever you want. Right. Okay. It's not like in Photoshop. Yeah. Where you can no. crop a little bit and a little bit, and then it's like you want. Okay. That's what I'm used to. But this is still really cool. With what three, four looks like. See, you can make it long and narrow. You probably get everything you need here for your sixteen. If you're, you know, for your easy cropping. I think you can do a freehand cropping 
by hovering over the corner. We tried that, but, it didn't work. Yeah, there was a moment where there was an arrow. Mm. Instead of the Go back to original. Oh, now do it. Slide, slide. I think that only moves the picture though. It's trying to move a picture around in a space that yeah. okay. size as a picture. Yeah. It didn't work that way. So I don't think it does that. This is rotate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Flip it, can you flip it back and forth? Because sometimes that's needed because people are looking outside and you want them to look in. Just yeah. Try, try taking your mouse and drawing, you know, on the image, just draw a, a square. Click and draw. Okay. It doesn't do it. No. No, it. no it's not. It's not that. It's not Photoshop. <laughs> so what it what does the magnify it do right next? Yeah. Oh, I see. That's that's cool. It, it actually will. Oh my gosh, we can do that. Oh wow, that's interesting. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, well, you you now you can use a combination of that and the crop tool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, <laughs> like that one's like all the finesse, and then you can yeah. There we go. Now yeah, if I that's how you that. do it. You just have to do two steps instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is actually really cool. We'll go back to the original. I'm not going to save it because I like this picture. I don't want to mess with it. Um, but anyway, so that's another new thing that we can do now. Um, and let's go here. And then there's accessibility. Um, and I, I'm not sure what this means. You can copy links and media screens and model dialogues with a button instead of trying to highlight a line of text. Does anybody want to be able to explain that? I think what it means for people who are, who are accessible, who need accessibility by using their keyboard, they, um, they're, they're going to be using their keyboard to do these things. And I guess it's like, I, I can't really see what you were we're reading because it's really small. Okay, you have a big monitor. View, zoom in. <laughs> view, zoom in. View, okay. zoom in. I have these pictures opened up in my uh, in my Photoshop. Okay. Every release. That's um, I just put a link in the chat, which I think is the same content. It looks a little different, but. Um, it looks like the official WordPress release. Yes. So, so it sounds like what they're saying is, you know, when you use your mouse and you try to copy something to paste? Yeah. Use buttons to do that um, if you're well, well versed with that kind of thing. Like, I'll use buttons to copy. I know how to do it with the keyboard already. Um, the shift option and copy and, and, and jump you know, over. The, the, they say assistive device. So I think you were right up the first time. Because this is about people who maybe are vision impaired and they want to copy some information. Oh, it's more than that. People who can't use it, maybe, um, or have a cast on their arm and they can't use it. Uh, they can't type. They have to use buttons instead of like this mouse. When you, it's it is um, it's um, making it so that uh, so when you cut and paste, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll click the mouse and then move the mouse over while right. we close it down that's very difficult for people and it's inaccessible for a lot and what they're saying is that it's not necessarily needed now when you're editing in this um admin area you can what, move it with a keyboard yeah that's what, but i how they're doing it i don't know because i'm and I, edit images in wordpress with your assistive device so those aspect ratios i could be talking into my mm. my assistive device and say yeah edit image Aspect rating shows sixteen nine, and it would do it. Yeah. Wow. This is actually freaking incredible. Actually, WordPress is extremely uh, one of the most accessible CMSs around. Wow. It's That's really hard to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and we were so lucky. We don't have to, you know, we can see it and so forth. Maybe some of us have some vision impairment or something, but. Um, you know, to be in a situation where you can't, you really relied on the computer for your communications tool. And the and fact that only 2% of the web is accessible to you. Right. But that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad. Yeah. 
but I, you know, I always try to make my websites accessible. You know, I'll, I'll always add alt tags to your images that describe what the image is, because that's what the assistive devices read. So well, they also they also pay mind to your headings and whether you're doing that in a hierarchical fashion, because that's really important too. Right. Yeah, that's important too. And using colors, I, I like it that WordPress has it. It tells you if a color doesn't contrast enough when you're doing the buttons and so forth. A little warning will come up. It's happened to me. Cool. It's like, oh, okay, maybe I need to change these colors. Okay. <laughs> and then there's this section for developers, and I'm not really a developer. So does anybody want to talk about this? The big box of changes for developers. There's oh. server-side registered blocks, dash icons, defining environments, passing data to template files, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what do you think about this, Doug? You well, probably know it better than me. Um, I haven't really looked into these very much, but I, I think the defining environments one was interesting. because so I think that might affect some plugins um, hopefully some plugins can take advantage of that. Like if you have, um, like an e-commerce store and it sends out reminder emails, then hopefully if you make a staging copy, it won't send out emails because it should know that it's a staging version. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a, a theory. Hopefully. Uh, so I think some of these plugins might know how to, might be able to tell based on uh, some common things that hosts do uh, when they make staging environments, but hopefully this will help, um, you know, standardize well, it even more. The passing data to template files is interesting. The developer thing, if you put it in your config file, the only thing I've seen so far, there is a plugin which you add it to your site and it will throw up a color block on your admin bar and tell you either if you've got it set for developer, it'll tell you it's a developer site. Oh, that's good too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I've been using that. It's uh, saved my butt uh, <laughs> once already. Because you can actually tell if it's a staging site. Yeah. You, know, you, see, you see it's a staging site versus a production site. You can actually see a, you know, yellow right up there. Or red. Or red, exactly. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Actually, that, Stop. <laughs> that one plugin, I'll, I'll, I'll put it into the chat, but that one plugin actually shows it in red, so. Okay. So like the passing data, the template files is interesting too, because um, if you're making a custom theme and you, um, you have um, template parts like a query, like you're looping through certain things and you get that's a template part you pull in to a page, it looks like you can actually pass some more data instead of just the file, um, the, the directory um, sequence, like where, where the file's coming from because that's usually all I was able to do. So I'm curious about that one. Right. If that made any sense to anybody. I'm like, <laughs> but I do that, I use that a lot, so. Okay. But the point is WordPress is always being developed and made better in a myriad number of ways. And sometimes it's, we we get used to what we're working with and then we go, oh, I don't want to try anything new. I got what I got. but. WordPress is constantly improving, constantly doing better. So, so there's something here for Kim, like I was curious too, where you're seeing the color accessibility when you start to make a button or something and the color's off. I'll show you that. I hope you demo that, yeah. I've done that before. I'm gonna close out of Photoshop. I thought I saw it do it for me too, but I couldn't remember it happened once and I don't remember where it was. It was, let me, let me see if I can make a button. I'll just do a regular button. Okay, there's a button. And now it picked this color because that's the accent color on my site. So, okay. But if you go to color settings, uh, where is it? Color settings. Bill, I know, oh, here they are, color settings. So text color is white automatically and the button color is this. Well, let's say I want to pick this for my text color. And there is a little warning that came up. Maybe you have to like save it or something. I've seen it. Yeah, before. I wonder if you have to save it. Maybe you think you're just playing around. That would be 
I, you know. Okay, that's fine. What happens if you save it? I'm going to save it. Let's see what happens. Okay. So now I'm here. Click in here. Wow, I've seen it before. Was it before 5.5? Yes. Yeah, I saw it before 5.5 too. Maybe they took it away. Maybe try the custom color. Hold on here. From the color color picker. See if that does uh, anything different. Oh, that, mm -hmm. Custom color. Okay. Um, let's pick that. No, um, I don't know what happened with that. You got to click inside that box. Yeah, I remember that thing. There, that, that should be good. That's good. That would be hard to read. Okay. And so I'm going to go. So click custom color again. The link. Yeah, to close it. And so I still don't see it. <laughs> you know what? They, they might have gotten rid of that. I thought it was before 5.5 .5 that I saw it. Yeah. I saw, I'm I, actually I, kind of surprised they got rid of it because that would yeah. be very hard to see. I remember seeing it when you would have text as a paragraph and you would put a background to it. Oh, maybe it doesn't do it on buttons. Let's try that. Okay, let's try that. Okay, let's do paragraph. So there's, what's the thing down in Yoast down here, the little readability thing? Is that, is that relative? Um, that has more to do with content. Okay, so I'm in my paragraph. Yeah, what grade level you're, you can read it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they wanted to be sixth grade. And I'm going to do or background color black. It doesn't show up. It doesn't. Well, that, well, white on black, that's a good one. So maybe we make that um, font, yeah, like that. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> I guess the buttons aren't that much text where you have to really understand, although the buttons are called actions. But. I have. I thought I'd seen it on buttons, but maybe it was just paragraphs. Yeah. Huh. So there it is. Uh, it should be on buttons, too. Yeah, it's I mean, it's a there. real yeah. obvious thing. Yeah, interesting. OK. I'm just going to delete these. There we go. Okay. So that's, um, I think that's what I had to present today. <laughs>